So to me, clinical investigations. Now we get to this. You probably yeah. been thinking about this question for months. No. Well, yes and no. He uh, wants to set it, me up. It's now. more like my whole life because uh -huh. it's been this. The clinical investigation has been that quite abstract thing at the very end that you simply need to get through to get to market. If you say, if you look at it that way, it's like saying you want to skip the whole courting process of falling in love just to get to marriage. I never thought I heard you compare um, dating with clinical investigations, but I think you just did. Yes, I did. We want to try to avoid to test things on humans as far as possible. Only yeah. when there's no other way to determine what the risks are, we would go to clinical research. Yes. If you could do any type of other test or an animal study or a bench test, you would do that. Yes. Yes. But of course, unfortunately, at the end of this long development cycle, sometimes you come that there's no other way to see if this device is safe than to put it in research with human subject. So I find it's I find it it's, it's it's a sacred moment in the development process that you you have to think about the patients, you have to pay a lot of respect to the physicians that actually trust you mm. to use an experimental device mm. on the subjects that they want to save the lives of. Mm. So what what was it that made you go into this field of clinical investigations? Well, so I came from a research, an academic research background, so going into research wasn't such a big jump. But uh, when I was in the beginning of my career, I wasn't sure what the difference between medical technology or medical devices and, and pharmaceutical mm -hmm. was. You know, I was basically, I thought the whole ecosystem of what doctors use was only pharmaceuticals and drugs. Mm -hmm. And then I was introduced by, you know, coincidence to the device of medical technology and since I am, am I quite a, I have a scientific mind combined with a practical mind I love this merge of engineering and science and clinical and medical knowledge so I, I have never changed everything ever since I think medical devices and, and in vitro diagnostic technology is the most exciting field to be in yeah uh, there is one more reason why I because I totally agree with you mm -hmm. uh, and, but my concern with pharmaceuticals is that it takes forever. Yeah. You could you could be going for 10, 15 years. Yeah, to, that's, to, that's true. To actually yeah. uh, have a, a full-scale uh, production or launch. So the devices in that sense, it's very short, you know, from the idea and the innovation phase to actually seeing it through and putting it on the yeah. market. Now, short it, is a relative term, I guess, uh, yes. because it could still take many years, yeah. but, but nothing compared to no, pharmaceuticals. No, no, you can do it time. within your lifetime. I know yeah. that you're old, but you still have the chance to see your device be put well, on the market. Well, thank you, thank yeah. you, thank you. So, and I believe in the course, because I've been reviewing your manuscript for the course, you are going to be revealing also how you can do a clinical investigation in less than 12 months. Yes. If you let smart people be involved in it, if you don't have a CEO that, you know, wants to do crazy stuff or somebody sandbagging it. No, it's possible. If, of co if it, it depends, of course, on the indication yeah. and, you know, the type of follow up. If you need to do a five year follow up, you can't do it. It won't happen in 12 months. No, no, no. No. But if with the, you know, the appropriate control mechanisms, uh, a good planning, um, you know, thinking in advance, anticipating problems, using common sense, which we know is not so common. But anyway, trying to use common sense, it's really possible to, to set it up and plan it well and, and execute it in a year.